Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Grandma Show, where Tom Tom and T chats with Bob Dub. Before we get started, please take note that the following content is aimed at a mature listening audience. Graphic and explicit language may be used at times, and listener's discretion is advised. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual hosts or guests on this show do not necessarily express those of this or any other platform, nor of any of the sponsors of any of these platforms. Listeners are advised that neither this platform nor its owners or agents shall be held liable for the content of this program. None of the material contained within this program may be rebroadcast, redistributed or reused without the express written permission of the hosts or producer. All right, today is our latest version of the Love Rebellion Chats with Bob Dub and me. I'm Tom Tom and T. And today we have our praying buddy. And we know them on minds as Boris and Kira Simeonov. Nice to have you here today. So would you like to tell us a little bit about you? Hi, yes, sure. Um, I uh, <laughs> am probably not what people expect based <laughs> on the names. But I have in my bio that I'm a fictional character. Um, initially, I created it as Kira Simeonov because Boris, there's actually a guy named Boris Simeonov on Minds, and I couldn't get the name. And oh. so I was like, uh, well, I'll just be Kira because I like Boris and Kira, like that combination. They're sort of like a duality anyway of, mm -hmm. of you know, of characters. They, they're deep they're closely connected so i was like well i'll just be uh kira Simeonov for for now and you know some people thought i was a lady for the longest time and uh i was like well i don't really care because i don't mind being anonymous on here and um so i did that for a while and then i was like this is gonna be this is too weird i need to be <laughs> i need to be boris Simeonov because this is gonna be like what are these people thinking? They're going to be like, what kind of lady is this saying all this kind of stuff? And plus, if they're really like, they read it and they're like, wow, this lady's cool. <laughs> you know? They start getting interested in me. And I'm like, uh, don't think that's going to work out too well for you there, Chief. You know, it's going to be kind of, <laughs> kind of bad. So. I was like, I'll do Boris and Kira. That that's uh, then I was like, okay, I'm married, you know, all that kind of jazz. So then people, you know, don't, that cuts any of that weird stuff out. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I didn't know at first that you were a guy either. I thought right. you were a girl. I thought Bob Dub was a guy, and Bob Dub right. was a girl. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there are people that think I'm a guy because my right. my little thing used to be just Tom, Tom, and T, but now. Right. I'm Rebel for love, get yeah. I, so I wasn't I've sure either because I was like, Tom, I was like, is that like a Tom Tom, like you know, whatever, or is that like uh, like a Tom and something like that, you know, like a person <laughs> named Tom? So I was like, I didn't know either. Yeah, I, I told uh, one time, I think it was uh, censorship sucks. My Tom Tom and T was my third husband, his nickname was uh, Tom Tom, his uh, middle okay. name was Tom, okay, and I've always been T, I see. So. Tom, Tom, and T, and that's what I started out with. But when I first started my channel, way, 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 way back, after I got thrown off of YouTube, I used to repost for a guy who used to be on YouTube, and they took his channel a long, long time ago because he was way too outspoken. <laughs> and he told me, he said, hey, if you want to put my videos up so I don't have to deal with them anymore, more power to He literally asked me to do it. So I did. So when I first started on Minds, people thought I was this guy, Gabe uh, Zola. Okay. It was really confusing. <laughs> I, I had to create my channel from the ground up because when I first came over, that was my only idea on Minds was to continue what he said. Right. So I had to kind of create myself from the ground up. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. And 
it's funny that we've got you here today that way down the road of supporters but early on one of my supporters was Eric Mar, the mm. very first person that ever talked to me in the old messenger mm -hmm. then it was uh, Willie leave a bunch of the ones that had been there before me that got me into the into the I don't want to call it game but mine's is kind of like you got to kind of know the ropes you got to know how to interact and I didn't what's reminding I remember when I first right. got the, all these little terminologies but now it's become like my second home I <laughs> when I'm not I do other things I do a lot of real life things even with my legs not working that well but it used to be that even when my legs were working well, when I wasn't in the kitchen, I was on the computer. And my son said one day, Mom, all you ever do is you're on that darn computer. Mm, yeah. So I've had sabbaticals. Boy, have I had sabbaticals. <laughs> I always come back. Mm. It's it's family. And Bob mm. Dove and I, she was talking the other day how far we go back. I was like... I do remember Bob Dub's channel early on. It was one of those ones, oh, that's cute. You know, you, when did you keep going back to, like, well, there was something there, but it wasn't, like, real deep, you know? Right, and like a pretty oh, picture or something. Yeah, just mm -hmm. something that kept you. But those were the ones, over time, it deepened. You know, you, mm -hmm. you just get to right. know them more and more and more. And it's funny that the, the further the family keeps going and the bigger it gets, the, the more we keep touching back with the ones that we used to know <laughs> all those years ago. <laughs> but you're, yeah. you're one of the newer ones for me. Yes. Anyway. yes, I haven't been on here very long, I don't think. It doesn't seem like, I, I don't know. My sense of time is pretty sh uh, bad these days. I, I don't know what, <laughs> you know, I don't know how long time has passed or whatever, but uh, um. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's kind of funny, like the path I took to Mines, because I initially was not on any kind of social media at all. And then I saw like all these weird things like from different social media platforms and stuff. So I tried like a couple different things to see what it was, you know, and some I just looked at them, you know, some I created like a kind of an anonymous profile just to in case I wanted to talk to anybody, I could, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, and then, um, I found parlor and so I got that and I was playing around on there and that's just exactly like what you said with the uh, whole remind thing and all that stuff. Cause, uh, I, um, was just basically reminding everything on there. Like I'd see <laughs> like any post cause I just hit the button. I just didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know what I've, said or reminded on that on parlor but um you know so i, I on there i met uh black knight and uh -huh. i saw that he was posting stuff about these books and i was like in a weird funk state like you know what i mean it was just like i just i have no, I've, i'm like i have reached apathy level nine thousand, you know and i you know, was just like, what, what is this guy talking about? Like, what are his books? You know, what is, cause he, I see like he'd post a post about them. So I did an instant message to him or direct message or whatever like that on there. And I was like, Hey, what did like, you know, I'm looking at your books. They look kind of interesting. Um, you know, and cause it's like, I haven't read like a good, cause I like sci-fi books anyway. Um, I, I really like, um, some of the Isaac Asimov stuff, like the old, um, ones like the, uh, the robot series, like I robot. And then there's other ones, uh, called the robot series. You know, it's like, uh, Oh gosh, I can't think of the names of them. I've got them like right over there, but I can't see them. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, some like robots of dawn and, um, something like that, you know, but anyway, these that kind of thing so i was like oh a new sci-fi thing you know like what is this and he's posting on parlor so i suspect he's not posting about social justice warrior whatever something and so mm -hmm. i started talking to him and he's like oh yeah um these you know these are my books i've written six books so far i'm, I'm gonna write like 10 in this and we chatted some some more you know just like so i found out a little bit and i was like you know what i'm gonna buy all six of these guys books 
because <laughs> it's like this is the kind of stuff you know like i want to support independent uh people mm-hmm. and so i bought all six books i started reading them I read the first one down at the beach. We were taking a vacation, so I like read it. On, I was like, "Oh man, I hadn't got them yet." So, and I didn't want to get them, like, because I knew I was going on vacation. I didn't want to get them like really fast. So I was like, "Okay, I'm going to order these and get them like slow shipping, whatever it is. You could pick, like, you know, deliver slow right. or whatever." So I picked it to deliver slow, but then I was like, "I want to read it." So I got, I bought the first one on Kindle, so I could read it like down at the beach. So I read it down there. I was like, holy crap, this book is good. And especially when I got to the part about Boris and Kira, I was like, holy cow, man, this guy is freaking awesome. You know, it's like this. I really like this book. And uh, I was like, man, and I've got like five more to read. This is awesome. So I, um, I got back home and I got the books. I got the paper copies and I just plowed through them. I just read like all of them like really fast. And I would like, um, I can't remember if I got off of parlor. I think I got off of parlor at some point cause they were having all sorts of trouble. They were getting hacked and all this crap, you know? And, um, so I, I was like, whatever they deleted the app, you know, off the phone and all that stuff. I was like, okay, whatever, man. It's like, okay, the FBI is going to come knocking at my door at any day now because I was on parlor <laughs> You know, and um, and I probably, po- you know, like I said, I was reminding like everything. So I probably reminded stuff that's like some crazy stuff. Who knows? Right. Because I didn't know what I was even doing. And um, so I get I was like, I right, forget that. I'm not worried about that anymore. So then I'm like, uh, I had seen a guy from there. I think he was. on. No, no. I had seen a guy. I got on Instagram as well. Because I, I wanted to be able to look at my daughter's school stuff. So I got on Instagram. I used my real name on that one. And I was like, you know, getting on theirs, looking. And I saw this guy and he kept referring to mines, mines, mines. I'm like, what the heck is this mines thing? And I, saw, I, I think I think a Ragmar had or Black Knight had some some mention of mines as well. It's like you can see my stuff on mines or whatever. So I was like, okay, let me try this mines thing. See what the heck that is. <laughs> so I got on there and I see Black Knight is a Ragmar over on mines. And I'm like, oh okay, cool. So I like hook up with him. I'm like, hey man, I'm like this guy from Parlor. And he's like, oh okay, cool, you know, whatever. It's like and so we talk about that kind of stuff. And um to get hooked back in together. And uh, I create. I really loved his books, so I, that's why I created my profile based on that. And my daughter is like a consummate pie chef. Like she is the best, like baker of stuff. She makes the best cookies, pies. That kid has made, um, what do you call them? Macarons, like the French macarons, and those things are ridiculously hard to make. And she made them, and they looked good. And it's so funny because they're too sweet. They're just, like, so sugary sweet. I don't even really like them. So, but I had never had them before, so she cooked it. And she's like, you got, you know, and I was like, man, that's a lot of sugar. I saw her putting sugar in there. So, like, man, that's a lot of sugar. She's like, yeah, you have to to get it to do like it's supposed to be. And I was like, oh, okay. So, she, so we did it. And <laughs> it was like, I get it. And they looked great. They were like, wow, these things are awesome. And I, I eat one and I'm like, man, this is good, but it's like too sweet. And then, you know, and then she's like, okay, well, I'll try it with less sugar just to see if it's any good. And she tried it. Wasn't, it didn't do right. So it's like, okay, you got to have, like, it's got to be right. You know, it's got to be that kind of recipe. I said, well, that is way too hard. Don't bother cooking that. Cook some Danish butter cookies because those are excellent. Mm-hmm. Those are so good. They're like better. I mean, they beat macarons into the ground <laughs> they're like boris they're like boris fighting some of the bad guys in there like you know danish butter cookies is boris and the other guys are macarons they just like crush them and uh so um yeah so i was just like cook that or cook something and she did some different variations of cookies she'd throw in walnuts and stuff like that just all these great cookie recipes and she'd modify it a little and just all these things. So yes, yeah, so that's why I got the pie. That was a pumpkin pie that she cooked. 
and um, we were at the beach at that time. And I think, yeah, that was, yeah, that was actually probably when I started reading his books, as a matter of fact, because it was like, it was, yeah, I, because I, that, that was, I think it was around Thanksgiving or something. And um, so that was a pumpkin pie she cooked. So yeah, so that was, that's my profile picture. It's a pumpkin pie that my daughter cooked for for us and you know i was like yeah i love her i'm a lover of pies and um <laughs> as uh i don't know if you guys probably can't tell you don't know so much i like different languages and stuff i put that in my profile as well it's like i like to see languages and see their connections to each other because there's a lot of connections that you just don't even realize for language mm -hmm. like for english and french and all this stuff and it's kind of like why is our spelling so crazy? You know, it's like, oh, it's because it came, some of the stuff came from French or like German or old German or old English kind of stuff was, they're all connected sort of. So I, I find that stuff fascinating. And then mine's was awesome to me because, you know, Aragmar's from a different country, Bob Dub's from a different country, all these people, you know, from different places. And it's like, wow, this is awesome. And uh, so, so, um, you know, this was a cool, cool thing for me. I was able to connect with a lot of people across the world and um, just, you know, just have some real connection. So, yeah. That's a fascinating thing, isn't it? I, <laughs> yep. I think about it. The, the one that we had with Eric Marr and Often Against he Garns, yes. we had me in the United States, one in England, one in Romania, where I think the third. Bulgaria. Yeah. And yep. then Bob to the New Zealand, like, oh my yes. gosh. I know. <laughs> We cover the globe. <laughs> yeah. Talk about a worldwide family. Man, mm -hmm. we're the microcosm. Yes. I just, I think it's amazing. But yes, it's funny that we interacted um, when you talked about your, your channel being with the the pie and your mm -hmm. name being a girl. Right. <laughs> right. When I first saw the channel, I knew the, the name inference, but I'm like, Oh, this has got to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's got a pie. It's pie sitting there or whatever. You know, and it's like, um, it's just kind of funny. Yeah. yeah, and then how I got to know you, I, I I sound like an advertisement for mine, but honestly, I love the new chat. I When it first started, I'm like, oh, this, what a pain. I like what I have. But I got over there, and that was how I really got to know you more because – that right. just that's where everything grew and, and right. i'll have days that i'm over in that chat room way more than i'm on mine's proper but it's it's where yes. the, the friendships have developed yes and that sprang from eric mar i mean we, we yes. keep going back to him all the time on these chats but for me if you want to talk about the father of our uh, movement here it kind of has to be eric mar yeah, he's yes. like the central spire of the thing or the central, you know, whatever, connecting point for us, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like how we all kind of got together. He's like the glue point or the or the connection point, you know, for all of us. Yeah. And when you were talking about the cooking, it made me think of Anitza in the mm -hmm. story. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, fascinating things that he makes. And yes. I, Justin just said today, talking about cooks, my son... I'm so glad I'm having more trouble walking all the time because, boy, am I learning to love. This guy can make some food. Oh. And I'm learning that don't don't think it's just women that can no, cook. No. no, there's a lot of great chefs and, and cooks and stuff that are guys. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like either one. Yeah, but he said something today, and it's true. I, I saw those beautiful things that you showed your daughter's tarts and things, and I mm -hmm. thought, oh, my God, the beauty in it. And yes. my son, we were talking about how this line of cooking, my great-grandmother used to say she put her finger in uh, this recipe she made. It was a Pennsylvania Dutch tomato and macaroni with it had beef in hers, mm -hmm. but it was an old Pennsylvania Dutch recipe. Nobody could make it the same. So we used mm. to say, put her finger in it. And Justin <laughs> was just saying, you know why my food is so good, Mom. And I'm like, <laughs> why? Because it's love. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you want to talk about Eric Mar, I, I kind of, I don't like going this way often, but I kind of see him as a, almost like a prophet, a watchman kind of. He's woken up a lot of people on minds, and 
some of the things that are happening online are, are well outside his purview, no doubt, because the way our intertwining rings of our family are. But oh, yeah. when I think about group, this group of, I don't know what else to call it, faith warriors, man. We are, <laughs> there are some real, you're a prayer warrior. <laughs> I'm an encourager. I mean, th mm. there are so many. And I think of these people, one of them calls himself something that's like a movie star hero. He's going to be on our show later. I'm not going to give his name yet because, boy, mm. it's going to be blockbuster when he does. Oh, okay. But this other one that we just interviewed goes around with the the knight armor I, it's just, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it, it just <laughs> does something to me that we are all feeding into this this thing mm -hmm. that is bigger than us. And I keep going back to this, we're going to make changes. People are all, oh, this is it. This is over. And what a mess. This world is, no, no, <laughs> no. We are not going to, we are going to stand up. We are going to put on that armor. And some of us are already wearing it. And we're saying, right. I am not consenting. I am standing for change. And everybody we've had on here is part of that. They're all, right, right. they're not seeing it like, no, nope, I can't do anything. I just, oh, I love right. it. Right. To, to, um, be aware of what's going on, see where it could go, and then do what we can do to make it not go to the worst case. Because um, if you don't do anything, these people that are steamrolling over us are going to do what they're going to do. Like they're going to stop, not stop until they do whatever they're going to achieve, you know? And they're ruthless and they've got like, you know, they have resources and all that stuff. But the Roman Empire had a lot of resources, you know, yeah. and it didn't stop Christianity. And nope. all this stuff has a lot of resources like China has a lot of resources. And I know quite a bit about China just from personal experience. And the there are. Christians over there and they are like real Christians because they're in the crucible. They're getting crushed, you know, and that's the real Christians right there. That That's the guy that's like, no, I'm just going to stand for my faith. Well, we're going to kill you. Okay. I'm going to stand for my faith, you know, and they kill him. And then some of the people that see him get killed are like, how could that guy stand for his faith? Like we're just like threatening him and he's peaceful and they just killed this guy something's up something's weird about that guy like what is why does he have that peace yeah that he can just get killed and not even like he didn't even bat an eye and then we're like punching him in the face and we're like beating him we're doing whatever and he doesn't waver because he knows he knows and it's and in fact this is so funny because it, it ties in with what i was teaching the kids today because we were talking about creation and we were talking about how sin entered the world. And you can see in that story that, um, you know, Satan is there to offer that fake prize. You know, go for the tree over here. God gave you all these other ones that you can eat freely of. You don't have to work. You don't have to do anything much, you know, compared. And, I mean, they were tending the garden, but you know what I mean. It wasn't like you know, hard work and, um, you got all this stuff you can eat, plenty of stuff. Folk, they, they're laser focused on this stupid tree that they're not supposed to mess with because Satan is like, Hey, look, this tree is better. Look what mm -hmm. I got. This better than what God has to offer. He doesn't offer you uh, good stuff. He's offering you bad stuff. Look, you're getting killed because you believe in this God, you know, you're going to die. You, you, do you think your God can save you? You're going to die. We're the Chinese government. We're the Communist Party. We can do whatever we want to to you. It's like, look, it's just my body. I can die. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to lose my soul. Not for you. <laughs> Certainly not for Xi Jinping or whoever. Mm -hmm. Mao. You know, whatever. You don't, you know, not giving it up for, for you. Sorry. Made that choice. So it's like, it's the same kind of thing. So we, we, we talked about that this morning with the kids and stuff, and it was like, it was good. And it's, 
it's great to see like kids thinking about the stuff and trying to get them to like see what's going on and like to and for me too to think about it like in a in a in the way of what it really is you know mm-hmm. it's like because there's all these things in our life that we see as the good thing right we you know I mean everything can be like a good thing right it's like oh my my wife my kid you know my whatever my house you know my car all these things right it could have some video game whatever you know mm-hmm. um all these things seem like good things but you know and they are i mean they're good things but it's like it's not the best thing mm-hmm. i wouldn't give up like i mean there's like a whole different there's levels of stuff right it's like okay donuts are good you know so <laughs> but i would certainly give up a donut before i gave up my car Sure. Yeah, you know, my car before I give up my kid. You know mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. It's like you know I'd give up. You know I'd give up a lot of stuff before I give up my wife. <laughs> you know, so and you know it's it's that kind of thing. So it's just a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff. I think about this stuff a lot nowadays, especially. I find I found what you said about China fascinating. I've been really mm. really interested in China. And the difference mm. between the Chinese people and who they are and what they believe and the Communist yes. Party, it seems yes. to me very awkward and, and, and complex. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's like th- there's a whole bunch. It's very complicated because, I mean, as you can imagine, right, there are, oh, how many? It's like it's all, probably almost 2 billion people by now. I don't know, but I, I think their population is declining. It's like 1 point something billion, but they, they had the first year of population decline, like, you know, since they've been doing better, but um, it, it's a lot. It's like 1 point some billion. Right. And um, so you can imagine, I mean, you know, the United States has what 300 and some million people. And we're all like, <laughs> it's so different between our so I mean my wife and I are different my my wife and my kid I'm I and my kid we're all got something different so China can you, you can imagine there's billion like over a billion people so there's every spectrum of people and there's uh the way the Chinese the way China is set up um there are um like these huge cities with so many people just jammed in there. And then there's like these farming districts out, you know, out in the country and stuff like that. And it's weird. It's like a weird thing, at least from what I've observed. I haven't been in a while, but like from the times I went, it was very strange to see because they'd have these farming districts and they'd have like this big apartment complex sitting there. And I'm like, what is that? I asked my wife, I was like, why why is there an apartment building like out in the farm country? And she's like, oh, that's where the farmers live. Wow. I'm like, what? They live in like apartments? And, you know, it's like, that's weird. I mean, not everywhere is like that, but, you know, that was one place I saw. And I was like, that's weird. Yeah. And, you know, and she, so like, there's that kind of thing. So there's rural people. Um, so, and I, I know people from there, and they grew up with a very similar mindset to me. And they grew up kind of same, like, you know, play in the dirt, go. Mm-hmm you know, have stick wars or whatever like that, you know, you do whatever you're going to do. You play and you have animals and maybe farm animals or whatever. And you, you just grow up in that country life and that's in China. And that's like, just, that could have been the United States. I mean, the same kind of thing, you know, Mm -hmm. and probably New Zealand and probably, uh, uh, Africa, you know, that, that same kind of stuff happened. Right. And, um, so yeah, so China is interesting, but then, you know, then you've got the communist party, which, um, they kind of, I I don't know what exactly happened, but it kind of loosened up for a while and Mm -hmm. things got a lot better for the people. And, um, because when my in-laws were growing up, it was terrible. They were in a terrible situation. Like they, they were the rich landowner type people. They were getting shafted by the government. You know, they, they stole all their stuff. They, um, you know, they treated them bad. They had to write like a report of all their bad, their thought crime, basically. 
Um, they had to go live with the farmers to learn from the farmers, even though they're like city people go learn from the farmers. Cause Mal was like a big farmer thing or whatever. Although he was really stupid, I guess he didn't know how to, he didn't really know how to farm well, but, uh, you know, so he caused great, like a whole bunch of famine and death and all this stuff, you know, and my in-laws were going through this and they were like starving and, you know, they go from like, uh, riches to rags basically is instead of the, the other way around. And, um, so yeah, so they suffered greatly. They couldn't even hardly get married. It was like a, it was like a big hurdle for them to even get married because they're two pariahs of society. Mm-hmm. They're in the bad cast basically, you know, they didn't have casts, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's in that sense of the word. It's like, Oh, you're the outsider. You're the crappy bad people. So, you know, but it's like everything. It's like anything that, that happens. You know, some people will persevere and will do whatever. And they became wealth, like not wealthy, but like they became successful after working and doing what they could. They made, they, they, they didn't just sit there and say, oh, I, I'm, you know, I'm in a bad situation. I can't do anything or whatever. No, they did what they could. And my father in law told my daughter, uh, wife, said, you get out of China. You come to the United States because it's the only place that's like decent. You know, you can, you can actually do something here, there. And, you know, uh, she's like, why? I don't care. China's pretty good. I don't speak English, you know, whatever. He's like, he's like, I don't care. He's like, you're going to the United States. So he made her study, made her uh, learn English and stuff. And she came and, you know, and, um, we met, you know, and um, so that's when I learned about like a lot of these things. And uh, then we, we got to liking each other and stuff. And we, we got married. And um, so I learned a ton about China, you know, over that period of time that we've been married. We've been married quite a while. So um, I've learned a lot. I, I've learned a lot of Chinese. I've learned a lot of uh, just Chinese culture and just just history of stuff. And then I talk to people from China regularly. So I, I know a lot about like what's happening and stuff like that. You know, like in general, I can't ask them directly like certain things, but you know, cause I don't want to get them in trouble, but I, uh, I know a lot about, about things that are going on. So, and it's like, you know, I told her dad that he used to write a book about this stuff. He's like, they'd kill me. Yeah. 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 That's something. <laughs> And you know, what um, makes me sad is that they're here and now they're seeing it happen right here. The yep, same. I know. It's the same and thing. it's not, and I, when you said all the stuff you were saying, it made me think it's not these people in the countries. Oh, that, no. It's not, not them we need to be angry with. It's these no. uh, overlords that have yes. taken the countries over. Yes. And it's, it's not the people's will. It's like Mm-mm. what's happening here. And we yeah. feel powerless. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, not the people's will at all. Yeah. The Chinese people don't, I mean, they propagandize them quite a lot, you know, obviously. So, you know, they're get, they'll get rah rah up, you know, oh, rah rah, China, uh, United States sucks, blah, 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 all that stuff. I, I, um, when I went, some guy told me, he's like, you can't be American. I'm like, why? Why, am I not, why can't I be American? It's like, because you're not black. Black people, America's all just black people. Because he had only seen like movies and sports things, you know, all these black guys like athletes and stuff like that, you know. So he's like, you know, it's like you can't be American. You're you're like you're something somewhere else. You're lying. <laughs> like, hey, that, whatever, dude. Yeah, people say that to me about uh, I come from Africa. Right. Right. I mean, when yeah. when I'm white and they right. they so so is your husband black? <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, guy. Yeah. I didn't make the cut. Right. I'm one of right. those evil white ones. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And exactly. talk about oppression. Bob Dub comes from what was Rhodesia. No yep. longer he doesn't even have a country anymore I know. because it was taken over by communistic things yep. that were being run behind it was communists. by China. Communism. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. It's, yeah. It's spreading its ugly head everywhere. Everywhere. And I do believe I just keep seeing the semblance of the Bible and it is it's the so beast. Do I. It yeah, is so do I. 
and that's what we're fighting and I, a lot of people are afraid of it but I keep thinking back of Tiananmen Square the guy right. standing in front of that <laughs> tank yeah you know? exactly and that was when things did get better for a while yes. because people were like no yep. no no yep. yeah it did get better for a while yep <laughs> and it was much freer I've been to Tiananmen Square and um I was there and we were saying Mao was a piece of crap standing in T Tiananmen Square. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, to, to have been there, I've been to the forbidden city, uh, to the great wall, you know, mm -hmm. all these cool places and stuff. And, um, it was amazing. Like, you know, just the, just the way it was. And then like, the, you know, and then I, I, I walked by, we, uh, cause my father-in-law said, uh, check out this cool house here. You know, it was in wherever they're from. And I was like, oh, that's cool, man. That's like a really fancy thing. That's like a museum now. And he's like, yeah, that was my dad's. Wow. Yeah. They stole it. The commie stole it. Oh, <laughs> he's like, I have to pay for a, a pay a ticket now to go to my house. I have so, to buy a ticket. Boris, why is it? What is it about communism that does this? Why doesn't it have checks and balances like all other sort of governing bodies? I, I, th I think what happens is the people that think that there are the people that are like true believers of communism. You know, we're going to share things and we're going to work together and like it's going to be great because the people the, the workers need um you know need rights you know because these companies are crushing us crushing our people you know and whatever we need to like overthrow these evil overlords these evil capitalists because they're just like taking they're stealing all of our resources they're they've created this company that makes us work as slaves and you know so that disenfranch like that people are disenchanted you know it's like this sucks man like we're working at this crappy job i can't make enough money to live this guy's sitting in a thing with a jet you know and freaking palace and he's no better than me you know and he doesn't even do any work compared you know what i mean like you know he's you know they, that's how they think you know that the, the ceo doesn't work really like compared and um so they get into this mindset that it's going to be better like this. But the thing is, the people that go and become like these figures for that, right? Like, so Mao like, and Stalin, these guys have a lot of charisma. So they're like, oh, yeah, the party and Hitler, you know, he was the same kind of thing. He's not communist, but it's the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the totalitarian idea, not. You know, it's not just like communism. So you can put whatever label on it. You know what I mean? You could because, I mean, our form of capitalism in the United States is not a great thing either. I mean, we've got like this oligarchy or something, you know, here in the United States. It's not like a true capitalism, like what we want, no. you know, where people are freely trading and, you know, you really can ride. I mean, granted, I, I rose up from poverty to success. You know, I'm successful. So is my wife. You know, we're, we're both, we worked hard. We became successful in this broken system. And, you know, we have achieved what we wanted to achieve. You know, I, I don't want to be like a billionaire or something like that. You know, it's like, because it's caught. I don't want to be famous. Because mm. it's like fame is terrible. <laughs> you know? It sure is, isn't it? Right. And so it's like, I don't want those things, but you know, it, it would be nice to have enough money, decent house to live, maybe the back deck, like uh Tom, 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 Tom was saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of thing, right? Like, you know, you, something cool, like some nature nearby you, something, right. Something decent. Right. So, okay. but these totalitarians, they don't care what you have. They just want the power. They want control over you. And they want to use you as like a pawn, you know, and they want to get these groups, you know, um, like in China, they would have these groups like stirred up against each other because they had the red guards. I don't know if you ladies saw that, uh, that, mm -hmm. that woman, uh, gosh, I can't think of her name. It's something Tong, I think is her last name, maybe Tang, if you would pronounce it like Americans, <laughs> but, uh, 
um, she, she um, was in the Red Guards when she was a kid. And I've heard stories of the Red Guards going around to people's houses, dragging an old grandma out of the house, making grandma kneel on glass, on broken glass. And people are just like, people are just like hiding in their houses, scared, because these kids have come, like, because they're teenagers and whatnot, you know, they come and, you know, they, they have no way to defend themselves and they're scared and they don't even think about defending themselves because they've been cowed, you know, they've been in this, they've, they've been taught not to fight, don't stand up, just be like whatever, keep your head down, keep quiet because everybody's a snitch. You know, they build these cultures. They build the culture of snitching. They build the culture of uh, dividing groups. They get groups that are not really sanctioned by the government, but they kind of are. You know, they just do all these weird things. So I think that is what happens, you know, with any of these ideologies. It could be anything. He thinks we should be out there. Well, mm -hmm. the problem with that is a lot of the people that are sitting behind these keyboards are afraid to get off these keyboards and go out there. Yes. So it's people like me that are saying, hey, yeah, we can have this community here. And it's a great community, but don't forget there's a front porch. There's yes. neighbors next door. Right. Uh, we go out and talk about going down and controlling the spring that's just a a block over. I mean, mm -hmm. we're actually thinking about things like this. What mm -hmm. if right. everything goes? And right. as Christians, you look at the the revolution that we had here. Right. What those people were. Now, not all of them were Christians, but they did all. Most of them believe in a creator. Right. And they decided that because the creator had laws that were higher than the government, that it was their, not only their their thought plan and their hope it was their duty to yes. stand up and say no we will not we will not let you roll over us because we are individuals but we value something more yes. there is something bigger and we don't have to listen to you so what if you kill one of us right that's what when you hit on that, the art of losing, you know, right now mm -hmm. we're kind of losing Christians all over the world. And what made them so strong in China? Mm -hmm. Persecution. Yeah. They were taking their churches and bulldozing it, yep. but those people didn't give up. Nope. And if we're going to get anywhere here in the United States, it's going to be the Christians that have to stand up, the real Christians. Right. I am so sick of all these <laughs> wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes. Because you know it, you see it. I, yep. I used to teach Sunday school, and I, I know not all churches are, but I could see it. My son could see it. I've taught Sunday school for years and years and years, took my own kids. And the first thing my kid said when he came home, oh, my God, that place is fake. Mm -hmm. And it cut me to the quick. Mm -hmm. But I, I just went through that same. My last teaching I did two years ago, right? Right when this pandemic started was when I stopped. Mm. But my whole goal had been. The children are the ones we've got to teach. They've got to know because yep. they're hearing from the schools, be right. godless, do whatever yep. you want, be, yep. be. It's the forbidden <laughs> fruit. Here's the yeah, forbidden for fruit for you guys. Take it, take it. It's great. It's really good. It's better. It's better than God. God's no use. You know, this stuff is great. <laughs> and look where it got us. And, mm -hmm. and the church did the same mm -hmm. thing. They went oh, yeah. for the wealth. They went for oh, the yeah. big building. They went for yeah. the jets. Oh, yeah. And here we got these Christians over in China with their churches being torn down and they're praying yep. and they're still surviving. Yep. Africa, too. I mean, there's like the Muslims coming through, killing the people, kidnapping their kids, you know, and stuff. Even kids were standing up, like, you know, to like the Boko Haram or whatever. You know, it's like, you know, come and steal in their kids. The kid is like, I'm not converting to Islam. You know, you'll have to kill me. And they kill the kid, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, but that kid's in a better place. 
So. Yeah, and sometimes it takes that. It, not everybody is, not, right. is going that route. Just no. just because you, you do have to take that risk. I, I, I put yes. up a post a while back about the people that signed the Declaration of Independence. Yep. What happened? Yep. Yeah, some of us are. Some of us are going to go down with the ship. Right. But we just showed with Christianity, we made it through the age before Rome, we made it through Rome. We made it through the Dark Ages. We made it through World War One, and those things, those governments have all fallen. But yeah, Christians they're gone. Still here. Yep. It is still here. Yep. And if you read your Bible, and we do really blow it, it's not going to end because God will say, "Oh yeah, well fine, I've had enough." But man, we don't have to let it. I want to inherit the earth. I don't mm -hmm. want to get well. I want to inherit. Right. And I see that with you. I, I want to go a, a little different um, tangent because you talked about how where you've gotten where you are is by suffering and how you've lost, but now you've gained things back. Can you talk to us about what happened with losing a, a child before um, you had grace? Would you be willing to go there? Yeah, sure. So, um we uh, had been married a while. We we waited before we decided to have children because we wanted to get to know each other better and have like a good like relationship together. So we didn't, you know. And plus, we're we're educated, so we're like, um, you know, we have got careers. We're pursuing careers and stuff. You know, it's like so we did that for a while, and then we're like, we're we're ready to have a child, and let's you know, let's try for that. And so the first child, um, we, we were going to our first ultrasound and the lady's like, I'm sorry. Like we're looking at those and we're like, what? You know, cause we see this baby and she's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? We didn't even know what's going on. We were excited cause we was like, Oh man, look at the baby. It's so cool. And she's like, I'm sorry. It's like, it, it's, it's dead. Like there's no heartbeat. We're like, oh God, you know. So we're like, okay, um, what do we do now? We're just like, we didn't know what to do, and um, so we're like, we just, I don't know. I mean, my wife was crying and just like, whatever. I was not doing good either. Like, we were just very stressed out. I was in shock to tell you the truth. I, I didn't even cry or anything. Like at that time, I was just like what it's like i got hit in the face with a frying pan it's like you know those cartoons you know <laughs> bong and so i was like um just devastated at that point then it got worse so we had to go and get the baby out because it wasn't coming out naturally like there was it just wasn't gonna come out and so they did what the same procedure as an abortion but the baby was already gone and we didn't, we didn't know we were young and stupid. We didn't even think about like certain things. Like we didn't have a funeral for that baby. Like we didn't even think like they just trashed. I have a baby in the trash. You know what I mean? Like where or wherever they, maybe they got the parts sold. Maybe my baby's in a vaccine or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? And, or being used for study stuff. Who knows? I don't know what they do with them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so I don't know if it's a boy. I don't know if it's a girl, you know, and so we lost it and like and then had to have the, the, uh, the DNC. Well, my wife gets an infection, um, after the DNC, they do another one to like get rid of the stuff. I think they give her some antibiotics or something. They do another one. Um, she gets, uh, this weird like she starts having weird pains like whenever her period comes she can't have a period um she has this thing called asherman syndrome and it's not very common but it's like when your uterus scars together and hers scarred together right at the cervix so it was like right at the neck of the uterus you know so it's scarred shut so you ladies know how it is to have your period and if that were blocked, can you imagine what you'd feel like? Mm -hmm. And she was not doing good. She's like really sick, you know, and the, the doctors gave her a bunch of hormones to try to get her 
uterus back to whatever because they didn't know like what was wrong and then she self-diagnosed like she got online and self-diagnosed found a group on yahoo at the time and this is called the asherman syndrome uh support group or whatever like that and that lady is like you know that lady is like um awesome that created that because she's helped so many ladies and so we're go we're there and we're like, okay, we think we got Asherman syndrome, whatever like that. And the doctors are like, okay, um, you know, we can do the surgery. And my wife had looked on this group and she's like, don't let the, 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 the group was so funny. Cause they were like, don't let those butchers touch your uterus. Wow. Don't go, don't go to the, whatever doctor you go to, whatever, go to only these a list doctors. And they, they gave an A list, a B list, and I think they did they even have a C list. I can't remember, but they had an A and B list for sure. And it was in by country, like it was all over the world, because the lady that started it's in Cyprus. Hmm. And the doctors wrecked her uterus. She couldn't have kids. You know, so she's never had any children. And so, um, so yeah, so what we asked the doctors, had, hey, you know, can what would this surgery take and whatever? Seven or eight hours, have to do laparoscopic surgery, blah, 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 all this stuff. Okay, well, how long, uh, how many have you done? None. And we're like, uh, we're not going to be number one. See ya. And so we went to California, um, and that's all the way across the country for me. And so we went to California, Found the A-list doctor there because we didn't want to go to New York. It was like it just we just didn't want to do it. We had friends in California, so it was like we can stay with them. And so we went, got the surgery. The guy was awesome, best doctor ever. I I love that guy. I mean, he's like the best doctor ever, you know. And um, you know, it's uh, uh, it worked out great. Like, you know, because of that, like he, he, the insurance paid for it. And, um, even though it was in California and it was like a weird thing, you know, and, um, it was great. My, my work was great. Everybody was great there. My, I had people at church, um, helping us like back home. Like they were, they brought us food and stuff like, you know, whatever, when we, they found out we lost the baby and stuff. And so that was when we really made the connection to Jesus and to God. Like that was, we were supposed Christians, we're sort of Christian, nominal, you know, kind of the mere Christianity Christian from like C.S. Lewis, if you mm-hmm. ladies have read that. Yeah. Um, we were not even probably the best of that. Like I came from a cult background, so I was like not even half sure of what was right. You know, it's like I'd read all this weird stuff. And then, I mean, God protected me from some of it. I didn't get into too far down the rabbit hole on that. But, you know, it was still weird. And I, um, you know, uh, we went over to, to California, got it all fixed up. We stayed there for several weeks because we had to have follow-ups and everything. And um, even he ran into a little bit of trouble like when he was doing it, because he said he went in with the, he was going in with not having to do surgery. He was just going in up through her uh, privates, you know, going up in and, but he couldn't get through. And he's like, I've got to do like a laparoscopy because I can't see. So they end up doing laparoscopic surgery and they, they fixed her up that way. And he's like, man, I'm so glad. Cause it's like, if I'd have done it, I'd have poked right through her uterus mm-hmm. and then we'd be done. It's like, I don't know if we, you know, it's like, and we were like, well, could she have been okay after that? And he's like, well, I don't know. I mean, you know, the uterus is like, maybe, but, you know, you don't know. It would have been a lot worse. Yep. Yep. And so after that, a while after, we got pregnant again. and Because, you know, we got to the point, And they told us the chances of having a kid is not much. We were thinking of adopting. You know, we're, we're thinking about adopting a kid. And... We ended up not, we ended up like getting pregnant again and we were scared to death. You know, we were just like, what in the world, man? This is like, you know, this kid's, I mean, what if this kid has the same problem? You know, you just do all the what ifs. Mm -hmm. And we weren't really trusting God that much, you know, because we, we did at the time, like when we were suffering, we were in the crucible, you know, and it was easy to trust then. It was weird. We, We felt 
we felt like, yeah, God is, we felt the connection. You know what I mean? We felt like we were having that connection with God. And then when things got better, we sort of got lackadaisical, eh, you know, everything's good and whatever like that. And then we're losing, like, you know, we're worried we're going to lose the baby because we're not, we didn't have any faith really. And, um, we prayed a lot and stuff and we thought, you know, we had our, our friends at church and stuff and whatever praying for us. Cause you know, we're sitting there worried and the, the doctors were like, don't travel far, do all this stuff, you know? And my wife was nine months pregnant when she had to go to another city to get her citizenship. Like, so we were doing the citizenship stuff all this whole time, you know, like going through all that mess. Well, she's like nine months pregnant. They're like, if if she starts going into labor down there, you come back to this hospital. Because we were at like some whatever hospital that's really good. And they were like, you come here. You don't you don't stop any other hospital. You don't do whatever. You don't deviate. You come right here. And because they were like, they were worried too. They're like, oh man. And they had like the really good doctors on, you know, like for her, set up for her and stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And um, she, it baby wasn't coming, and so we had to have a C-section. So they just scheduled it, and then we did the, the. Uh, actually, no, did she start having labor? I think she did. I'm sorry, she started having labor later. You know, not at the not at the citizenship thing. That was fine. That was that went smoothly. That was just a worry for us. We get to the, we get back here. Time passes. When's this baby gonna come, man? You know. And like I think they did schedule it. They did schedule the the C, a C section, but they also gave her like some stuff to make her like to induce labor. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't coming. Baby was like, "Nope, you're not tricking me. I'm staying in here." <laughs> and uh, so we had the C section. Perfect. We never had any problems like throughout that whole pregnancy. No matter how we worried, and what we thought might happen, and what if. And all this terrible stuff, you're never going to have a baby, you're going to die, your wife's going to die, and, you know, whatever. We didn't have any trouble. It was perfect. So we named our daughter Grace after that. So, and we're like, you know what? God exists. We know he does. And he's, he's proven himself to us over and over and over again. And, you know, and that's what we tell people. You know, it's like, that's, that's just the way it is, you know? And... You know, people will say that he doesn't and all that stuff. They'll, they have their reasons. I mean, they've suffered. They've had bad things happen to them and stuff like that. You know, everybody does. Everybody has had terrible things happen to them at some point in their life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because I went through something similar. I had placenta abruptio. It's, mm. it's not a, a condition like your wife, but it just mm-hmm. happened and it nearly yep. killed me. Yeah. And, in that situation, I had a near-death experience, and right. that near-death experience is what brought me back. I had grown up in uh, Southern Baptist Church, so right. I was exposed to it. I believed it. But it was like you said, that near, yeah, yeah I believe. Yeah, kind of, eh, yep. <laughs> yeah, well, when your life is bleeding out of you and you're up, I literally, I either saw Jesus or an angel, but at the time I was sure it was Jesus, but mm-hmm. it was the same thing it was because of something like that and before that i had also had a miscarriage that was Mm. far enough along that i had had the same thing that you were talking about with your wife Mm. and in that situation i was very i had had left a marriage that was violent and i had no insurance had Mm. no money the baby was dead Mm. same situation and i had to go to planned parenthood of all places yeah Yeah. (laughs) so there's a lot of similarities there and even with the third uh, baby that I had my um, daughter Mm -hmm. after going through that death experience with my son Mm -hmm. she was a breeze just Mm -hmm. like yeah no problem no nothing all the way through she was three weeks late Mm-hmm. And I told right, her, yeah, that, Grace was you too. aren't touching me with that Pitocin. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> so she came three weeks late. I went in at like midnight at 3 a.m. I had to, it was just so fast. Three pushes, mm-hmm. she was born. And oh, wow. Like, and we prayed that whole time, dear God, we cannot go through this again, please. <laughs> and like you said, he answered, you know, yeah. it's there. And I've gone through periods of time where I was successful. My 
I've gone through times where I had a brand new house in Denver. Right. right. But I've also hit right back to the bottom. I, that's yeah. just the way I bounce like a ball, you know. Yeah, that's what we say too. I told But when that. you get in that bottom is where you get the strength. As yes. much as it hurts, as you, much as you want to yep. scream and cry and yep. moan. Yep. The refining happens when you're down in that yes. gutter. You have to be in the crucible to get refined. You have to be under the pressure, you know. The fire is there, the crushing weight of all the stuff. That's when you get it. It's not in the time when, oh, yeah, man, I just won the lottery and I've got like, uh, you know, whatever the stuff, you know. That's you not when say, you thank you, God, but you're like, yeah, yeah I can handle it. <laughs> right. you, you think you trust in that. You know what I mean? We trust in all of these stupid things. You know, it's like we trust in money. You know, money may have no value. I mean, they were papering. They were like wallpapering their house at somewhere with money. I forget what country it was, but because the paper money was worth nothing. Worthless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably like uh, Rhodesia was like that, too, once it became Zimbabwe, because mm -hmm. like the Zimbabwe dollar or whatever it was just it became worthless. They had like, it's like a million, forget what the currency is, but, uh, dollars. Yeah. Dollars. It is. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like a million Zimbabwe dollars. It's mm -hmm. like a penny or something crazy. I don't know what the real exchange, but you know what I mean? I think they were the then, first country in the world to issue a million dollar note. Right. I think <laughs> yep. a loaf of bread costs $3 million. Yeah. I, yeah. It was something like that. Yep. It was crazy. Yep. Like the Weimar Republic having to take yes. some money in wheelbarrows to go yeah. get your loaf of bread. Yeah. 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 But God yeah. doesn't need, I, I tell you what, I, I have been, it's so shocking when you're down there and you're poor. I've had people give me food that I didn't even ask for when I yeah. was so, so poor. Some awesome. lady across the street used to bring me donuts. I mean, it's not oh, the man. best food in no, the world. No, but it's food. <laughs> And it's better than nothing. Giving you clothes. There's, right. uh, I mean, God works. Yeah, God can use money and certainly does and uses yeah, yeah. wealthy people. 100%. But he doesn't need money. 100%. I, yeah, the, I, the, I know. It's a tool. It's a yeah. tool. The thing is, what we've decided and what we've learned over the years, because we didn't know this either, we, you know, we were st striving to make money, you know, we're working, 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 make money, make money. That's our goal. And we can retire and do whatever we want to do, whatever. And we're like, God, God was like fifth or sixth on the list. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then it's like, um, you know, we were like, this money is God's money. You know, it's for his purpose. This is not for our purpose. This is not for us to have like fancy cars and fancy stuff. You know, it's like this is for God's purpose so we can use this to help people if we can, you know, and we, we you know, we can help the church, you know, we can help other people, you know, you do whatever, you know, but that, that helps people. And it's like as God calls you. I mean, there's always people that are wanting something. There's always people that want something from you, whatever, like the schemers and the whatever like that, and the scammers and the political parties and the whatever, the charities, you know, oh, save these poor kids here. And, you know, one cent out of every a thousand dollars will go to them. <laughs> you know, that's the real story. But, you know, you don't they don't tell you that, you know, but, um, you know, so it's like, no, it's this has got to be used for God's purposes now. We we found that out. It's not our money. We we we've got to be like using it for something that's good. And you know, I buying a Ragmar's books, buying some of his merch, helping him as an independent author. I help another guy um a monthly I send him money cuz he's uh he's been out there for years and uh he it's uh Alfonso Rachel. I don't know if you guys have ever even heard of him. But, um, yeah, Alfonso Rachel, he's actually a Christian and he, um, made, he's like a drummer in a heavy metal band and he's like, he, it's cool. Like I like, I bought like, uh, one of his albums and stuff and I like send him money because it's like the guy's out there telling it like it is. And, you know, I'm like, I had a calling for that. It's weird. Cause I was like, why am I like, you know, what, why do I need to give money to this guy? I, I need to do it, you know, mm -hmm. 
And so I did, you know, so I do. And it's like, he's like, he's pumping out good stuff. And I don't always catch his videos, but he, he, he had like, God, gosh, some hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube and they shadow banned him because he's telling the truth. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'll help you. I can give you a little bit of money, you know? And so I do, you know? And so stuff like that. So it's like, that's, so I've decided just, but put your, but don't put your faith in the money. Money's not going to do anything. I mean, you know, it's like, and don't be greedy for money. Every time I was greedy, I lost money every single oh. time in my life. Amen to that. I have yeah. to say that. Did you know that it gets back again to the community thing? Mm -hmm. Because when you know that everything you have basically comes from God. Yeah, right. you worked for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think about Japan. I, I have to get back to, I saw this thing about that tsunami in 2011. Look at mm -hmm. all those things that those people work for. Yep. Washed away. Yeah, it's gone. Minute. Just washed away. Yeah. A minute. So don't think yep. that everything you work for is yours because nope. it can. And I've seen it. I've literally walked out with nothing but a suitcase and then it, at once with nothing but the clothes on my back. If you don't think it won't happen. Oh, 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 oh I know. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I, t <laughs> I mean, you, you wouldn't have. And Bob Dub wouldn't have thought her country's going to be gone. No, no. <laughs> and I think one of the things about about my country being gone is the, is that I don't think it went fairly. Mm -hmm. I think Africa now belongs to the Chinese. Mm -hmm. So do I. And when we were there, when I say we, the colonialists were there, right. mm -hmm. we had this um, loyalty or responsibility that we felt towards the indigenous people. Right. I'm not talking at government level. I don't know what. Right. I was young. I know what you mean. But yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Like people to people. So every single farmer, because they're big ranches there, because it's mm -hmm. a semi arid sort of place where the ranch is. Mm -hmm. So every single rancher has his own little village on his property where he builds a little school and he builds right. a little shop. And all right. these these little village communities were nurtured by the local yeah. farmers right and um when the chinese well the chinese backed the, the right war, the terrorist war yeah and um now and, and yeah so so everything that we were doing all the things that we had put in for the benefit of the people were taken right. away yeah and when i left rhodesia to go well it was zimbabwe then when I left Zimbabwe to go to South Africa because we were thrown out the country, mm -hmm. um, my maid begged me not to go. She said, mm. you don't know. She said, uh, you hear in the papers of people complaining about white people, but mm -hmm. we don't want to work for black people. We're mm. never, ever allowed to, to have time off. We become mm. slaves. They won't pay us. And it, mm. for me... It was too late. I was, I yeah. was on my way. I'd been kicked out. Right. But for me to, at that stage, understand the injustice that was happening to the indigenous people. Right. We were being thrown out. We had other places we had to go. Right. But the people who stayed, they, they indentured slaves. And, and yeah. I say a million dollar note, what were right. the people... Anyway, right. sorry, that's kind of a little bit of a blether, but um, yeah, no, it's I good. have seen it, and it, it has been shocking. And I, yeah. do, I do feel very resentful that yeah. what we were trying to do and how we were trying to uplift the people right. was squashed, and now, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm sort of saying clown world. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. In 83 or yeah. 2 or something. Yeah. Everything that we had tried as Christians, as colonialists, right. as people who believed that we were God's right. messengers to the world. Yeah, you're helping, right. You're, you know. And it was turned around. It was made that we were the evil ones, that we were yep. racist and that we were right. oppressing the people. Right. And, yeah, and the, the world back, the, the, what were called the freedom fighters, but were in right. fact behaved like terrorists. Right. 
they were. Yeah, you, they were you communists. Awesome how terrible some of the abuses were that I witnessed from that. Group. I'm sure. I believe it. Yeah. I know I've watched a few videos. I came, I don't know how I came across it, but I found this like uh, Rhodesian patriotic song yeah. and it showed like some footage of like guys there fighting and stuff. And, and apparently like in, like in the United States, they had like this magazine called freedom, uh, uh, soldier of fortune. And Americans would actually go and fight in Rhodesia, you know, mm -hmm. against the communists and stuff. And um, it was interesting. It was like an interesting history. I watched a historical video about it, and I watched um, that patriotic song. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, and and it's like, wow, this is cool. I like it. I like that song. And I'm like, it's like, it's just, it's kind of like, I feel for what they felt. You know, and then to know somebody from there, it's like, wow, that's cool. That's like a much cooler song now, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, yeah. we were very naive. We were right. very naive. We were very innocent. We Same believed here. in. We believed in God. We believed right. that God was on our side. The right. white, all the white uh, people. Uh, it's hard to talk in. in I still talk in African terms where people talk mm -hmm. about whites and blacks. But yeah. all the white people believed strongly that they were God's representatives. And what we mm -hmm. were doing was was part of God's work. Right. And it was never, it, yeah, it was never meant, it was, we never saw it as, as racism. We never saw right. racism. And I see mm -hmm. that happening in America now. Yep. The same thing that, that I experienced there. And it, all I can say is, all I can do is put it down to communism. And I, I yeah, can't, that's the why same I'm kind asking of thing. all our guests tell me about communism. Yeah, I, I know. sort of can't understand. I sort of can't believe it. I know. It can be a political the, ideology the, that can just murder people it, indiscriminately yeah. and get away be, with it for centuries. Be, because it is attractive. It is that forbidden fruit. Because people think that it's something that it's not. Because the on paper, it sounds. I even have a friend. He was telling me. He's like, man, I read um, Marx and stuff, and I read about like communist stuff, like the Communist Manifesto or whatever. And he's like, man, this guy is so smart and so cool. He has such great ideas, you know, of all this stuff. And then my friend was like, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like this, you know, they. they people don't do that mm -hmm. like that's it's not it doesn't work that way because what happens is somebody some charismatic guy comes in and he's like doing this stuff and he doesn't really care about helping anybody he doesn't and the thing is too it doesn't have god there's no god in communism right the state is the god you know so it's like that it doesn't work because it's not reality based and people will say, Oh, you're stupid. You're a Christian. You're, you're not reality based either. Flying spaghetti monster is more real than your stupid God or whatever. Yes. So, but you know, I mean, facts and truth are what they are. They're true, you know, and it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how much you say they're not. You can see it time and time and time again these communist places does not it does not work and they have tried real communism because real communism is a big pile of skulls at the end My poverty son, and a pile of skulls i have a very 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 darling sweet lovely sister who's just a honey and through this whole trauma that i've had she's been my absolute right hand mm. And one of the things that I found, actually, I think that this interest maybe in communism has grown up in me since Carly's death. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I found was that I couldn't, I couldn't interact with people normally anymore. It was this mm. huge tragedy in my mind and normal life was irrelevant to me. Right. And so I couldn't read books. I couldn't distract myself from my misery. Right. Yeah, you were in this loop. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I found myself reading Viktor Frankl's um, uh -huh. Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. And then after that, Solzhenitsyn and the Gulag mm -hmm. Archipelago. Did you read that? Yeah. I know. I've read parts of it. Yeah, I haven't read it I don't know that I've yet. finished it. Yeah. I've, I've mm -hmm. quite, and it's also been, for me, uh, this, this sort of... Um, 
hmm, unbelievableness, right? And mm -hmm. I think for this dear sister who's been my rock, um, communism, something that's so bad, something, something that I got from the world, mm -hmm. said to me, communism's not as bad as all that. It's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> And I, that was, that, I think that was when the panic level started to rise in me. Mm -hmm. But this right. amazing woman who is right. on top of her game, on top of her world. I mean, she's just opened her own business. She's, mm -hmm. and she can <laughs> say to me, she has been brainwashed by, and I, I was too. I was, mm -hmm. we'd lost Rhodesia. We were obviously the wrong right. ones. We were obviously in the wrong a long ago, right, because you thing. lost, yeah. Mm -hmm. It must have been in the right because it won. Mm -hmm. And I must be being racist because mm -hmm. what right. the solution could, could it be? <laughs> and, right. think, and then after that, I came to, of all countries in the world, New Zealand, uh -huh. strongly socialist, strongly, mm -hmm. strongly socialist, and seen a lot of goodness come out of that. Mm -hmm. Sure. And our strongest trading partner is China. And mm -hmm. so since like the 80s up until now, I've just got used to the encroachment of communism. Right. And mm -hmm. since Charlie's death, been woken up to the fact that this is actually a huge, huge, terrifying danger that... Yes. And it seems to be, to me, but it could also just be confirmation bias... It seems to me that it's women who have bought into it far more strongly than men. Yeah, I've actually read that communism is more of a female motherly type of ideology. Wow. And um, because, you know, the state's taking care of you because that's a nurturing thing. It's like, you know, we're all sharing. We're cooperative. We're not competition. You know, it's that kind of thing. The government's there. It's going to be like, it's the government by the people. We're all working together. It's the people's stuff, you know, whatever. And, you know, people's, people's whatever, you know, the products are people's coffee, you know, and people's whatever, you know, it sounds great, right? And, and it's like, oh, but, you know, people's coffee is made in this factory with slave labor and there's iron bits all in the coffee and screws and dead rats and you know and all this stuff because nobody there's no incentive to do what you need to do like to make a good coffee you know yes. there's not that's not there's no reason to do it would you work hard if all of your stuff goes to me like you you work every day work hard work 12 hours a day and then your paycheck just comes right to me. Yeah. You'd have no incentive. No incentive. Um, none. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's. Uh, I've been thinking with the being on mines for me. I have strongly felt that there's a huge movement of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes mm. I come onto mines. I find it so powerfully. I feel. I feel like it burnt. I don't know how to explain that. I know what you're saying here. Yeah. Really? Do you? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've been recently thinking to myself that Jesus used to talk, or the Bible talks about people being fishers of men. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering now if it's that, the, I don't even know how to express this. Let me just say it. It's as if people are being fishers of women. Yeah. Right. We've got yeah. to get somehow, we've got to get the woman out of that feeling that right. everything will be fine if we do it the woman's way. Right. Because everything is not fine and we've tried the right. woman's way. And I, like I say, I've bought into the whole slowly, slowly um, being infiltrated, shall I say, with the yeah, sure. perspective. Yeah, and of course. It's I, easy. Yeah. I'm the one that I, I have to say, I believe that I could be a strong woman. I believe that you can a divorce. Yes. Yes. But, but I just took it in a different way. Yes. <laughs> right. And I took it that divorce was right because I had oh, to, divorce I see. to get out of a situation that was terrible and I didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. And yeah, when yeah. I went to understand and said, how do I cope with this? The only advice I could get was on how to leave my husband. Mm, I see. 
And so I hear, well, obviously, that's what I must do. Step in here and say something. You know how you said you feel the feeling of the Holy Spirit moving, right? Well, mm -hmm. what does the devil do? Right. The devil imitates, right? Mm. And the devil, if God seems more patriarchal, which most, most people would say, correct, mm -hmm. then this imitation, this socialism, this communism being motherly right. is coming right from that dark evil, the evil itself that wants to, oh, God thinks God can do it that way. Well, we're going to do it. The women. What did he do at the very beginning? Who did Satan go after? Right. The right. women. Yep. And he wants to divide us. He wants to yes. separate us because right. what are we? Face it, women. We're weaker. We may be strong in some things, but yeah, you we're have weaker. Good, right. You have good qualities. It's like you have different qualities, but you're not physically as strong, you know, generally. And we and don't have some, we don't think the same way. We no, think you do not most. think the same way. <laughs> and what and what did they do? They separated us from the masculine and left yes. us hanging out in the wind. Yes. And Satan used that. If you go back and look at the Passion of the Christ, who did it show Satan looking like? Mm -hmm. Androgynous, more mm -hmm. female than yeah. male. Right. He's using the dark side of femininity right. to destroy. Yep. And not just women. It destroyed our families. It yeah. destroyed our cities. And now it's destroying our... This beast, it's not just China. China is right. just under the thrall. It's, a tool. it's like the uh, Assyrians, you know, the Babylonians, um, all those same kind of things. I mean, you know, the, whatever was in power at the time, you know. The Assyrians were like, nobody could touch them at the mm -hmm. time. They just would come and just kill, do whatever. They just basically could do whatever they wanted to with your place, take you out of there and put you in another country. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? So that's amazing. Like back then. You look at you Nebuchadnezzar. Know? Yeah, that's he what I mean. Like he, was, he, was, he was like a god to, you know, in terms of power. I mean, if, you, if, you, if Nebuchadnezzar said, jump and jump, uh, you know, Better just keep jump. jumping. Don't stop jumping, or I'm going to kill and you. What did God turn him into? Right, grass? an animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just going. He's mindless out there, you know. But uh, yes. yeah, it's it's. But it's like you say, like the because the the interesting thing about it to me, like you say, who doesn't love their mom? You know, who doesn't love moms in general? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Everybody loves their mom. Mm -hmm. It's like we have a saying here, you know, mom, I think, what is it, mom, baseball and apple pie, something like that, you know, Tom, Tom, you know, it's like, what it's like goodness, it's, it's goodness and light, right? I mean, you, know, you can't go wrong with, with mom, you know, so if you have a motherly nurturing thing, apparently, if you seemingly have that, then, you know, how can you be against that? How evil are you? Why are you so evil to be against? Do you hate mothers? It's like they were with the whole vaccine thing and stuff. You're killing my grandma. Killing my Who grandma. doesn't love their grandma? Mm -hmm. you know? It's the same thing. Again, it goes back into that God isn't male. God isn't female. Yeah, he's so above us. It's not. Yeah, we don't even that's have why a, we quit trying yeah. to say he. We, we really quit trying because God isn't he or she or God is love. That's what we've been saying because mm. God is balance. God is all yeah. of that. God did send us Jesus, but I, I, Bob Dub and I've talked on this before. The Holy Spirit seems feminine. And I think that's the feminine aspect of God, this kind of glory. The, that's why the devil goes after that because that's the appealing side. That's mm -hmm. the emotional, the soft, the love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they're forgetting that other side, the, the internal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you just said, mom, baseball, and apple pie. Well, what about dad? What, what right. did they yeah. yeah, what, exactly. What are we not having now? Yeah. That's dad what, brought like, order. Yes. Dad it brings strength. Things, strength. You know, I'm a lot stronger than my wife. Like, you know, if somebody came into this house, who's getting the, their ass kicked if the guy is better than me? Me, I'm getting my ass kicked first because I'm going down there to fight, you know? But right. I'm the one capable, the, the most capable. 
And in fact, I, I watched, uh, it just, you just, just reminded me of a podcast I listened to because the guy was talking about this and he was like, he was like, even the fattest slob couch potato guy there is, if somebody comes and attacks their little kid, he's going to try to fight to the death. And it doesn't matter if he's capable or not. You know, he's going to fight to the death. And that's what dad is. Dad is that strength. He's the protector. You know, and that's the mindset. You know what I mean? Like he's the, he's that kind of thing. He's a stabilizer somewhat in, in, in things, you know, he might be a little rash. Sometimes he might have a stupid idea, you know, that's like, you know, or like a violent idea, you know what I mean? Or whatever, like a more not thought out, you know, not always. I mean, men can think too. We're very good thinkers. I mean, logical thinkers and all that women are too, but you know, um, we may be a little more brash. We might be a little more, you know, uh, rough, but sometimes you need that. I think that women don't understand men. I think that women yeah. have had this whole thing of anything a man can do, I can do. I'm just as right. good as a guy. I deserve this just as much as a man does. Blah, blah. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's yeah, that's true. Great. But then, in, in in New Zealand, it horrifies me. Right. Even on the radio, on adverts, um, <laughs> women, are you sick of waiting for your husband to fix that plug in your something? Why mm-hmm, don't you right. do it yourself? Because these useless men are so useless. Mm-hmm, and right. I don't know what it is, but it's that attitude. I know what you're saying. It's the attitude. And the, the men, women have, have become empowered, which is great. Yeah. But men, well now, now that they're empowered, they're disempowering the, the male half of the population. Yeah. Trying to, yeah, right. And I, yeah, exactly. I see that in Africa. I, and I mm-hmm. see that in relationships myself. I find that when I've broken up with my husbands, which is mm-hmm. the most a shameful thing to say, husbands, mm. Mm. I have started behaving like them. Mm -hmm. I think that the same thing happened in Africa when the white governments went. Mm -hmm. The black people, the black governments started behaving like the white governments. Mm -hmm. And it's as if when something is removed, the people start behaving like it. And women Mm -hmm. tried to remove, tried to stand up and and speak against abuse of women in the kitchen, in the home. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, that was great, mm-hmm. and it really needed to be done. But the men have now stepped back, and they're doing—they're trying to do nothing at all. Right. And now women seem to be taking on that abuse role themselves because right. I don't know. That's that's kind of my own pet theory at the moment. Yeah, that's I understand. That there's a lack of balance, as if it's gone yes. too far. This is why I like my name on the mines i like my fake name on mines because boris <laughs> and kira Simeonov, boris and kira because without one without kira boris would be like i'm pulling the freaking moon down and i'm crushing the earth and i'm gonna kill everybody you know and i'm gonna like you know whatever i'll just like you know, just rip you to shreds. I'll just kill everything. You know what I mean? Like on the Tazaran planet or whatever, you know, I'll just mm-hmm. destroy you guys. You'll be nothing left, you know? And Kira is like, life is val- has value. Life has a connection to the universe, you know? You're, you know, you need to be soothed, Boris. You know, it's like, here, let me help you not feel so angry and like, tragic because you suffered terribly you know but so did i but you know it's like so we i understand you and i'm a little softer side of things and i can help you balance that because you know without the balance i mean me without my balance of my wife Mm. i'd be like boris Mm -hmm. oh i would hell yeah i'd be like boris i'd be like you know if i could if i could get if i could do that stuff you know, if I could have, and I always joke about it on mine. It's like, I need artillery, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, cause people are talking about, Oh, you know, whatever guns and stuff like that. It's like guns don't do it. I've got to have artillery, you know? Hmm. And, um, 
so but yeah i'd be, i'd be like that but it's not it's not right i mean it's not the the it's not a balanced approach it's not how to deal with stuff you know you have to be you have to have that balance of things you got to have the wife's perspective you know the female perspective you got to have the male perspective too mm-hmm. you know In we're the not Native male Americans, don't they say i i just read it from somebody i just saw a meme about it they said the way we're li- the way that the uh, government should work is the women do what they want and we give the final nod. <laughs> and I was thinking, there you go. That's pretty we funny. Go- but at least they're working together. Yeah, they it's work that together. Balance of that. We keep going back to that word. Yeah. And I've is. said it with my son. My son balances me because we're yes. both really deep thinkers. Right. And I'll go off on this crazy tangent, and sure. he'll come in and I'll say, "Oh, mom, come on." Right. You know, yeah. Get back on, and that's what a lot of people miss is that they don't have that balance. So for right. those, like Bob Dubs, she doesn't have a husband. She doesn't mm-hmm. have a son nearby. She does have mm-hmm. people around her. So mm-hmm. hopefully there's balance there. But mm-hmm. for the ones of you, I know there are people that listen that are completely alone. Right. So right. if you're a female, what is your balance? If you're a right. male, what? Look up. Right. Because yeah. your friend, Jesus said he is your friend. Right. And God is, he can be all, God, I, there I go saying he, God can be all things to all people. Right. So if you're a widower, like my neighbor next door, that he comes over here for balance. Mm-hmm. He's got his family, literally. He's got a real family, but we are the other one, the next right. door family. Yeah, so yeah. when he feels that, where does he come? The widower comes to see the widow. Right. You know? Yeah, it so, makes sense. Yeah, there has to be that balance. And I think mm-hmm. what happened when Bob does say, what, what the, why, what, what happened? And we've said it before, the women being empowered like they were and not given that balance when I have temper tantrum. I don't know what other word to call it because I was in that too. I was right in the middle of it. I graduated in 1974 when you were throwing your bras away and <laughs> throwing your men away and loving the one year, you know, all that. Mm-hmm. And what did it get me? It got me three broken marriages and right, only right. one of the, they all called themselves Christians. Mm-hmm. But when you get down into the pit, who's the real Christians? Right. And really none of them was, I was unequally yoked. Yeah, Even yeah, the yeah. best one of the three, I was unequally yoked. But at least when I was with them, I had some of that balance. Yeah, you had and a male then, counterbalance, yeah. Then when you walk away from that, and Bob Debo and I have talked about that too. Now what? Now right. what? I am post post in a, re, in a relationship. So then what's next? And I think what we hit on is that our next is like what it said in the Bible and like what the Native Americans have done. The old women mm-hmm. sit and tell our stories and pat the young ones on the back and say, Get back out there, Johnny. Go back right. out there and fight. Yeah. But, so we don't have to go back into that. For me, that's going backward. Because then I have to adjust to another person. And now <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore. So I have to remember to keep that balance between me and God even mm-hmm. stronger. And yeah. not everybody can do that. Like for Bob Dub, it may be different. She may say, Oh, I ran it as really godly guy. It's going to work this time, and it will. And for her, that might mm-hmm. be the way. But right. for me, I'm Mary Magdalene. I'm mm-hmm. the one. I, my pockets aren't that deep, but they're deep enough that, like you, I support other people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not right. going to say who and how, but I right. do. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to embarrass them by saying so. But right. That's who I am now. I'm Mary Magdalene. I'm the one sitting here saying, okay, apostles, I know he's alive. Now you guys get up and go do something. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. We need each other. I mean, we're made for each other, you know. We're we're not like, you know, it's not like some, it's not like men are some great thing up on this high tower and women are way down here or or vice versa women are up on this pedestal and men are like worshiping at your feet no it's we're we're equal we're we're ve- we're we're equal and we're not the same 
you know, but we have the same value. Like, you know, a human has a human value. Every human has some value, you know, and there's debate about communists being human or not, but, um, <laughs> but, but, uh, every person, every person has some value. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I used to find that, that was on um, World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Amazing thing. Every time you kill something and you loot it, it has something on it. Everything mm -hmm. has loot. Everything mm -hmm. has value. Yep. The thing is that the higher the monster that you de defeat, right, higher level the more mm -hmm. loot you can get off it. Sure. I mean, I've learned so much from video games. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Some of the stuff you. you that's what I was telling you like that one time I forgot what it was. Oh, I never knew kiwis grew on a vine. I always, I always thought kiwis were like on a tree or something. You know what I mean? It's like, I just didn't know. Yeah. And uh, it's like the strangest weird thing. I never really, it's funny. I never looked it up because I often look up like these things, but I never knew that until you showed a picture of a kiwi vine. Yeah. And I was like, Holy crap, man. That's so cool. The first time I knew it was when I came to live on this orchard. I've never uh -huh. told anybody because I thought I was so silly. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. There was this big vine in the tree. There's a big yep. pine tree. Right. And there was uh -huh. a big thing going up it. And I said, what's uh -huh. that? What the heck is that? Yeah. The wild fruit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like mustard when you get back into that time and this time uh -huh. you know in israel mustard seed yeah it's the smallest tiny. little tiny seed but it can be a tree it will mm -hmm. literally grow into a tree and right, those right. people when jesus told that parable that's kind of what we're doing again we're, we're talking in parables sometimes yeah, right. and other times we're being more direct but right. those people knew that that little tiny thing could be a tree. Yeah. So what yeah. we're saying is this little tiny mind, this little light of mine, it can be more than just mine. These lights can light each other up. Right. And that's, right. I think that's what, I'm so glad you came on because you were lighting up our light and nobody Good. even knew who you were. Good. So now they know that you're the light behind our light. Good. <laughs> God is the light behind me, so it's like that's, that's good. right. <laughs> that's that right. Brings me back to hierarchy and patriarchy. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it earlier, and we have this thing in our social discourse at the moment about how patriarchy mm -hmm. is so bad. Mm -hmm. There is a hierarchy, right? You can't undo the hierarchy, but there is a network as well, and you can't yes. undo the network. That's right. And you have to have these things working together. Yes. Do you think that women balance themselves into hierarchies on their own? Or do you think that's a specific male thing? That's a good question. I think they sort of do. I mean, just I've noticed like how some they they are more cooperative, I have noticed, like in some ways than, than men. But men cooperate too. Yes. But um, we we form, and it's weird, I, you know, because I, I think this, this I come back to this podcast that I listen to, and I think this guy is right on the money. Sometimes he's not a Christian, but he's quite good. Like he's, he's quite wise in some ways, you know, because he – he noticed things about men and stuff like, so like, for example, example, I could be the alpha or the whatever in some circle of men, mm. but then in another circumstance, I'm not the best at that. Like, say if I was going to be writing something, I'm not going to be the best writer. A Ragmar is going to be like the alpha of that for me, you know? Mm -hmm. So it would be like me and whoever else and whatever. And I'd probably be down pretty low, but you know what I'm saying? So, but then if it was like some other skill that I'm good at, I could be the alpha of that. And then we'd take these different roles. So yeah, it's kind of like, I think that even exists. I mean, that exists for women too, because some women have like certain skills or whatever that make you the thing. I mean, like, you know, you're grandmas, right? So you know about grandma stuff, yeah. you know, if there's some young lady coming to you, she doesn't know anything about grandma stuff. I mean, she knows that grandma gave her some candy or a cookie or something, you know what I mean? And grandma's nice, you know, that's about all she knows, but she doesn't know how to be a grandma. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, so you can teach these things and help. I, I think you're, I think there are, and I think it's a flow. It doesn't stay, it's not static. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's not at all. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Love is alive. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, it, what do you think? I was very, very um, surprised when I asked Haragma what his vision for the future was. Yes. Re- reading the books and everything, I, mm-hmm. I really get this sort of vision that we're going to have to fight for everything, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm trying to understand what fighting means, but... Um, mm-hmm. Right. Oh, I've gone... Mm, I think there's many ways. Yeah. yeah. Just as many ways as there are people. Right. Our fight is to be patting the guys on the back, whatever you got to do. Chris wants to do it one way. Right. Rush wants to do it. We're just the ones saying, you can do it, guys. You right. can do it. And right. some of us may have to pick up our gun. But, you know, if we do, it's more going to be in defense. We're not yes, going to be yes. the one. You know, come on. Right. Yeah. Let's get serious. But it doesn't have to be that all of us have to fight. Like, right. he also serves who only stands and waits. That's right. But you do have to understand that we don't want that. Our fight right. doesn't right. have to be. That's why I keep saying pray, pray, pray. Yeah, it is definitely. so powerful. The act of observation changes the outcome. So if you take that act of observation and then pray out loud, don't just say it in your head. Breathe it into the atmosphere. Make your voice count. And don't just go out and say it in the front yard if you're brave enough to go to your city hall or your school board. Or I mean, Christians aren't supposed to just, yes, we do stand and wait, but we're supposed to do exploits. We're supposed to yeah. occupy till he comes. Did his disciples do nothing? No, not at <laughs> Look all. Look at Paul. They did a lot. He, yeah, wasn't Paul. S- he made his own living making tents for right. people, but he went out and and conquered Turkey. What is Turkey right. now is no longer Christian, I'm sad to say. But, I mean, right. really, come on. Right. And we think that all we're doing is sitting here talking. Yeah, maybe me and Bob do. <laughs> but somebody else is like a aunt of the Nagante Garms. He's building a bar for when they're tired of fighting. Right. <laughs> we yeah. don't want the fight, but... Oh, yeah? Right. We want to come? Right. Yeah. Come yeah. on, and we're yeah, going to exactly. be under the cross of God. You know, yeah. you can have right. your worldly power, but and we've all been drawn by it, even authentic antique arms. I wasn't sure how spiritual mm-hmm. he was at first. Oh, I found out. They're mm-hmm. not hearing it from me and Bob Dub. They've already right. heard. The right. spirit is out, like she said. It is out in force. And I oh, just yeah. read... On the Prophecy Club channel, it's not the old Prophecy Club, but the guy said, watch out, we're going to have miracles again. The end of the last age, what happened? They turned everything upside down with miracles. So watch out. And you might not even, like you were saying, your your wife couldn't have children. Well, look what happened. Miracles. It was. I know. There's a lot of stuff. We've looked back in our look back in our life we've seen so many things and it's like holy cow man it's like this is amazing the fact that i'm alive today is amazing just based on the stupid stuff i did as a kid you know <laughs> it's like yep. god was watching out for me for whatever reason you know he knew that i had to do something mm-hmm. and you know and i guess i'm doing whatever you know i don't know if i'm always doing the right thing but it's like i try to do what i can do now like i if I'm if I'm hearing those little tugs and stuff, I try to hear do it. You know, especially if I need to pray for you guys, it's like you know. And I often hear, feel that tug, and I'm like, okay, I need to pray for these ladies and stuff. And I don't always put the little hand symbol because I'm busy doing stuff. Like I might be doing some other things, but yeah, I'm praying for you ladies all the time. It's like you know, it's like oh man, and it's funny because it's not like oh I need to pray for both of them. Sometimes it's like. Oh man, Bob Dub needs something right now. I think you know. I don't know why. I don't know what you know. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, pray. And it's funny sometimes my prayer is like the stupidest prayer because it's like, you know, <laughs> God, you know what she needs. I have no clue, right? And just yeah. give her what she needs right now. Help her, and let me be helpful if I can. You know, if not, let Tom Tom and T help her. 
somebody, whatever, whatever you need. Like, you know what I mean? So I pray for that kind of stuff, you know, a lot of times. I mean, it's just all sorts of stuff. Sometimes I pray for specific things, obviously. If I know yeah. what's going mm-hmm. on, I would pray for a certain situation or something like that. But, you know, yeah, so it's my, my vision for the future is probably, I mean, I like a Ragmar's vision for the future. Um, it's pretty good. I quite like that. Um, I, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that too, where we could at least travel between countries much easier. And cause I want to go see and talk to people from all over the place. Cause I had a great experience in China. Um, and it was so weird. Like, you know what I mean? You know how tall I am bobbed up. So <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it's like, uh, I'm not the tallest. I'm not like short, but I'm not like the tallest person. And in China, I was like heads and shoulders above people. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm like a freaking giant. How you know? Gosh, what an experience. <laughs> I'd love to be able to just go and pop in and see Bob them tomorrow. And then yeah, me too. Go yeah, down to exactly. Brazil and see Eric Babel in Brazil. Yeah, and then, right. Oh, yep. that'd be so much Yeah, it'd be fun. awesome. I know. Yeah. Invite you guys here. Like you could go to different places, like, you know, whatever. Yeah, you could just come over for stuff you know we could do stuff together you know what i mean it would be amazing especially we could get like the whole crew of people together you know? and even and, if we don't see that you know if we don't get lucky enough to see it coming somebody is going to you know yeah. not all of us are going to get there right but the ones that i don't know i might i'm not gonna Mate, you, like never know. you know you never know there may be a little little secret formula but mm. it's still what we accomplish together right it's worth whatever because i i think bob did mention it before about being refined in the fire you mm-hmm. see you yeah. know silver is is right when you can see your reflection in it mm. so if we are being reflection of god and mm-hmm. really reflecting it like you are and like we try to carry it on, you know, mm-hmm. we all have our strengths and weaknesses, but Obviously. we do. We try to pass that candle on. And if one gets extinguished, there's going to be three more to light it up. Yep. So, and even that one that you didn't think, I, I told Bob Dub about the thing I saw out on the porch of the, right. the porch light and the way it was around the hummingbird feeder. I could mm-hmm. just see because of the hummingbird feeder all those insects around Uh and there might be a hierarchy between them but did i see that Mm. no i saw that unity that drawn to the light right and it's not the fake light it's not the false light it's the light that you feel inside and you will know because like you said the evil one wants you to find the things that will destroy you yeah yeah yeah. and it looks appealing it looks so good but What's wrong with deeper. having a Lamborghini, you know? What's wrong with having, like, a giant house with, like, whatever this stuff, with a swimming pool and, like, whatever? What's wrong with having, like, all these beautiful ladies, you know, if you're a guy, you know, whatever? Or what's wrong with having, like, five different husbands because it's just, like, I'm tired of this one or whatever? You know what I mean? It's, like, all these things that look good on the surface, you know? And it Even just, this it's, thing. Destroys you. This yeah, thing right. is going away. It's too. going away. I know. The that's thing what I, that's me isn't what this not, is. Right. That's not us. Right. Yeah, exactly. I know. Yep. And that's so why even I if I don't make it with you, for example, or right. Bob Dub, my spirit is going to be right beside you. And yep. God's spirit is going to be right beside you. Right. When I think about so, that final battle, you know, right. Erismar put it yep. in his books. It's in The Hobbit. It's yep. in so many. That final battle, if God does have to come back, the ones mm-hmm. of us that went on ahead, we're coming back fighting. That's right. right. But guess what? Yep. That fight, what is it? One, all Jesus right. has to do is, yeah. is talk. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, amazing. not everybody's going to get bloody. Not everybody's right. going to. So know. keep that in mind. It, you think, just like they destroyed Fukushima that quick right. with a tsunami, what right. do you think this is going to do when we come back? So oh, yeah. if, if we fail at our, our version of perfection, right. Wait for what comes. Yeah, it's but a real I, perfection. I still yeah. don't think he wants to do that. I think he, a, a creator wants, you're a teacher. 
Mm. What do you want? Do you want your way to be the only way? No. Right. No, of course not. Yeah. You it's want not even to the best carry way. on. To be yeah, right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So Whatever. I, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same for you ladies, you know, cause it's like, and it's like, you, you may think, and like for me, I'm like, what good am I doing? I'm like some of the stuff, you know, but it's like, it, you don't know, you don't know what good you do. Cause like I became a Christian because an old, well, she wasn't old that, that old then, but because a black lady that was the my my friend's mom always talked about God whenever we, I came over to play, you know? I didn't care about God when I was, like, however old. I didn't even know what, like, really much about it. And, like, and she asked me, you know, she's like, uh, who who is the man that died at Calvary? And I was like, I, I have no idea. And, you know... My, um, my friend's like, Jesus, he's like kind of whispered as a kid, you know how kids do. (laughs) So it's like, Jesus. And I I was embarrassed, you know, and that stuck with me because I was very egotistical, even as a kid. And it, that shaped me. And I was like, so that's, this is, you know, that just like these little things, she didn't know that that was going to be the catalyst. I mean, she, she had an idea cause she knew she read the Bible, like she knew about the Bible, but she didn't know that for sure. You know, she's just like planting a seed. She didn't know if it's going to grow or not. Yep. And there's other things that watered it. So yeah, you guys are watering me like for, as I'm growing, you know what I mean? I'm hopefully watering you guys and like building you up some and helping you a little. I pray for you all the time. And that's the, what I can do, <laughs> you know, I do what I can do. You do yeah. a lot. It's amazing. Your prayers, <laughs> I think, are answered often. Oh, good. Yeah, because mm. I'm, I'm a pretty much, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm surviving, I think, at the moment because people are praying for me. Because mm. I'm not oh. actually, I'm not actually, like, firing on yeah. all the cylinders. Understood. Yep. Well, I'm I'm really, really, really grateful to you for all the prayers, for the support. For, oh, you're welcome. Oh, honestly, I don't know. If Let I me can, know. <laughs> but um, also coming on and giving us your time like this and giving us so much good perspective. It's taking me one step towards balance. So thank you. Good. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> all, right. all right. You guys have a good afternoon and right. good day, Bob Dub. <laughs> Y'all take care. Love you, love. Bye-bye. You You too. Bye. Bye.